so in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to set up your sound pro sound level meter for uh, use with a community noise study. Usually these are 24 hour studies done using one of our outdoor enclosure kits running for at least 24 hours. So when you start to set up the sound level meter for your community noise study, uh, you want to figure out what sort of readings you're looking for. If you're looking for something a little bit more in depth, maybe you're concerned with uh, rumbling noise or something like that, um, it might be more useful to look at the active band type of measurement as opposed to the sound level measurement. Um, the active band measurement will give you readings of the sound level for specific frequencies where just running it as a sound level meter will only give you the overall sound level. Um, so you're able to set that by pressing the left soft key on the main screen. It'll toggle between SLM, which is your just typical sound level meter, it'll give you a decibel reading, or your one one or one third octave band. Right. So when you're running a community noise study, uh, typically you're going to run it using a couple of different parameters. Uh, the way this is done is by setting up both meter one and meter two. Um, so on meter one, we should have it set up with the A frequency weighting. Uh, the A weighting is most uh, similar to the way that the human ear hears, cutting out lower and higher frequencies, while the mid-range lo seems louder than everything else. Um, and then on meter two, you'll typically use the C uh, frequency weighting, to include more of the low and high frequencies with your results. Okay, so when setting up your sound level meter for a community noise study, uh, the first thing that you'll uh, figure out uh, is the minimum sound level that you're going to be concerned with. Um, if you want to include all of your sound level readings in the study, you can go ahead and turn the threshold off by pressing your enter key. If you want to set a threshold, um, being the minimum sound level that you're going to include with your results, uh, you'll go ahead and press the enter key and adjust the threshold with your arrow buttons, and then the escape key to save that. Um, you also want to consider what sort of exchange rate you want to use. The exchange rate is going to be how much exposure you allow yourself um, within the sampling period. A exchange rate of three decibels will uh, cut your exposure time in half for every three decibels, whereas an exchange rate of five decibels is a little bit less strict. Um, your exposure time is then cut in half by every five decibel increase. The criterion level is going to be the sound level that you're concerned with. So if you don't want to reach noise levels exceeding 90 decibels in your community, your criterion level should be set for 90. Any sound levels that are recorded above that uh, level will be recorded in your ex exceedance level chart, which we'll get to later in this video. The upper limit is similar to the criterion level in which it'll record the amount of time spent above a specific sound level. The upper limit should typically be set higher than the criterion level. It's going to be the sound level that you don't want to happen. So if sound levels reach a certain point, you need to basically kill it. Uh, that's what your upper limit is used for. And then the projected time for community noise is typically a 24 hour study. So you can adjust that by pressing the enter key and changing it to 24 hours with the arrow keys. And all of these parameters should be set for both meter one and meter two, which from this screen you can toggle by pressing the rightmost soft key. Once you press that, you can run through the same setup that we just did, making sure you have A weighting set for meter one and C weighting set for meter two. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna set up on the Sound Pro, um, we will go into our setup menu, uh, we'll go into measures, and we're going to set up our exceedance levels. So the exceedance levels are basically going to represent um, the portion of the study that sound levels exceed a certain percentage above your criterion level. 
So for example, your L1 is typically set to 1% above your criterion level. Once you hit uh, that percentage above the criterion, it'll start counting the amount of time spent above that level. Once you reach L2, you're at the 10% point above your criterion level, and it'll start a clock for that as well. When you're looking at your results, it helps you gauge sort of where um, sound levels were becoming more of an issue for you. Uh, you also will need to have turned on the uh, LDN measurement, which accounts for human sensitivity to nighttime noise. And basically it's going to just add 10 decibels between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. Um, you'll also need to have your community noise exposure level turned on which is very similar to the day and night uh, uh, value, but is also going to give you the calculated average exposure over the 24-hour period while accounting for that nighttime noise. Uh, and lastly, for your comparative analysis, you need to have the uh, C minus A measurement turned on, and that'll automatically calculate the difference between your C and A weighted meters. Um, in order to have that turned on, if it's not letting you, you need to make sure that meter 1 and meter 2 are set up exactly the same, meaning the threshold, exchange rate, and every other parameter that was set should be exactly the same. And finally, the text, tact maximal interval can be turned off for this type of study. So the last thing we're going to set up on, on the meter is uh, our data logging settings. So we just want to make sure that we have all of the parameters, uh, including the average, peak, maximum, and minimum uh, turned on. And if you're doing an octave band analysis, you want to make sure the filters are turned on so that you can see all of the uh, um, frequency sound level readings when you go to download your data. And then finally, you want to make sure you have a logging interval set. Um, if you have a shorter interval, It'll give you a more accurate overall test because there's more data to work off of. Um, but if you're gonna be running for longer, it might be best to have a one minute interval as opposed to a one second interval. Um, so it's really dependent on how you're running your study. And then on meter two, you can press the right soft key again. You just wanna make sure you have your average peak, maximum and minimum turned on for that as well and there's no other parameters that you can log for meter two. Then we'll go back to the menu by hitting the escape key and we'll go down to the time and date to make sure that that's set correctly. You can set your time by sell, uh, pressing the enter key and then adjusting using the arrow keys. You can move to the minutes by pressing the enter key again and then adjust that. And then finally the seconds if you care about that. Uh, you can then press the enter get key again to go down to the date, uh, press the enter key to select. You'll change your year first if, uh, if that's not set correctly already. Um, then it'll have you change the month and then the day. And the day of the week should automatically change. Once you have all of that set, you're ready to run your study. Um, so you can go and go into view current study and press the run slash pause button to start your test. You'll see the clock in the top right corner start to count up, as well as a triangle appearing in the top of the center of the screen, which just indicates that you're running. Uh, after you've collected the data for your study, you can go ahead and press the pause button to stop your study, and then press and hold the stop button to save it to memory. Okay, so that's how you set up your sound level meter for a basic community noise study. If you have any questions, please call the number below and we'll be happy to help you.